recovery? What recovery? That pretty much sums up the attitude of protesters who've gathered outside the annual meeting of world central bankers and finance ministers in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. There's talk the US Federal Reserve may raise interest rates before too much longer. The protesters think that would be a big mistake. One of them is 57-year-old Reggie Rounds from St Louis, Missouri. He's been unemployed for three years. In the community which I reside is a disheartened community. Uh, we don't have proper housing. All of our education, all of our grade schools are closed. We don't have work. There is no recovery. My community is moderate to low income people and it is deteriorating as we speak. We have no jobs and the jobs that are available or jobs that you can sustain. We just aren't able to survive as a community of people. And it's just, uh, it's complete chaos. In your experience, there's not much of a recovery in the United States. Sir, in my experience, in my research, the system is totally broken. This system does not work for the majority of people. There seem to be two classes, the rich and the poor. I've not been able to associate with the rich and I'm surrounded by the poor. So what do you think the central bankers there can actually do about what you've just described? I, I think that they must realise that they must hear the workers in the situation. Uh, the, the recovery that they're talking about, all the people that I know, the young people who are owing their student loans and they don't even make sufficient money to pay these loans back, I deal with the, uh, as working in my community, sir, I deal with the Urban League. I deal with so many organizations. And throughout these organizations, I'm finding everyone in debt. Everyone. And these people are working more hours than the normal. And uh, there is no recovery. There is no recovery. Uh, I can see that a decline, and it appears that things are considerably getting worse daily. That was Reggie Rounds. Well, also at the Jackson Hole protest is R. Day Barkin from a New York community organisation called the Centre for Popular Democracy. I asked him why he had made the journey. We've come to deliver two messages to the Federal Reserve. The first is that workers' voices need to be heard. Macroeconomic policy is really important and it affects all of our lives and it can't be left up to just a few wealthy corporate executives or elite bankers and the voices of workers around the country need to be heard as part of that policymaking process. And the second message is that this economy is terrible. People are starting to say at the Fed that the economy is strong and Fed can ease up and can stop supporting the economy and it can raise interest rates and we think that's a terrible, terrible and mistaken view of the economy. Too many people don't have jobs, wages are stagnant. This recovery just isn't reaching millions and millions of working families. I guess so there are a lot of people out there, aren't there, who've said, look, we've, we've lived with this sort of wall of cheap money for way too long and it's kind of distorting our view of reality almost, that you know, interest rates shouldn't really stay so low for so long and that you know, reality has to return some time. Are you sensitive to those concerns? Well, it, they're focused on what they think the ideal interest rate should be, but that's theoretical and, and, and not um, as important. The, the real question is, how many jobs should we have in our communities and what should wages be like? And the reality on the ground is that wages are stagnant and there aren't enough jobs. And until that's fixed, the Fed needs to move full steam ahead to try to create as many good jobs as possible. That should be the priority. I don't know what you're planning to do there at the meeting uh, in terms of protest. I don't know what your plans are. Do you think your voice will be heard? We hope so. We have t-shirts here that say, what recovery? Question mark. And on the back, they say we need an economy that works for all of us and show a graph that uh, the income of the top 1% has skyrocketed while wages have been stagnant for everyone else. And I guess our central message, which we'll have on a banner, is if you're interested in labor market dynamics, ask a worker. Because this conference is uh, ostensibly about labor market dynamics and who has a better perspective on that than actual workers? I was talking there to Arde Barkin of the Centre for Popular Democracy in New York. Is the United Kingdom about to become a disunited kingdom? In less than a month's time, the people of Scotland will vote on whether to stay part of that kingdom. All this week, uh, we've been looking at the economic and financial factors weighing on voters' minds. Polls suggest that the biggest group who remain undecided are women. 
for the final piece in our series, BBC Scotland's economics correspondent Coletta Smith looks at how supporters of independence have been trying to win the female vote. <laughs> 